My husband, 33-year-old male, and I, 23-year-old female, have been together for almost seven years, and he is, was, the love of my life. We met when I was 16 years old, fresh out of high school and going to college. He met my family when I was 18. I was a virgin, and we couldn't be intimate without getting married. We're Muslim, by the way. He proposed when I was 20, and we got married when I was 22, right after graduating from grad school. I never wanted to be a stay-at-home mom or wife. Before we even began to date, he was aware of my expectations. From 2017 to the end of February 2024, my husband was loving, caring, supportive, and handsome. He was my best friend, my mentor. He is an engineer, and I work in finance. We, mostly him, built a house from the ground up together. We have a garden where we don't have to buy fruits and veggies. I was his princess. In November 2023, I saw that my face was getting swollen and my belly became longer than usual. I didn't really pay attention because I was busy. Six days later, I ended up at the hospital because I wasn't feeling normal. The doctor told me that I was pregnant. My husband was so happy. I didn't know how to feel about it, but I was happy just because he was. He took great care of me and went above and beyond to make sure that I was happy, especially when he found out that I was carrying a pair of babies. I was grateful for that. This relationship was not perfect, but we always found a solution or a way to make things work between us until February 2024. Out of nowhere, my husband started giving me ultimatums to choose between my career or my family. He also started commenting and complaining about my appearance, specifically the length of my belly. He spent an entire week making nasty comments about my body, saying how my belly occupied more than half of the bed. After delivering the baby, he said my next stop should be at the gym instead of home because I looked funny. Those comments hurt me and he could see the pain in my eyes. He didn't want to go to work or go outside because he said that the way I looked would make him look bad. He got mad over the simplest things, causes. He yelled at me. The husband that I knew for the past seven years was a completely different person. He made me cry every day for the last two months straight, but I still held on because I thought it was a phase and everything would be okay. I refused to believe it until a week before my due date. He told me that in order for him to sign the birth certificate, a DNA test is required. He called me an innocent looking girl who is always the biggest intimacy worker and proceeded to tell me, who knows, you might have one of those work husbands. I was so hurt, exhausted, and mad that the only word that came out of my mouth was okay, and that was my last word with him. On the delivery day, I took all the stuff that I packed for the babies and myself. I took an Uber to the hospital where I was meeting with my best friend. Her husband is a lawyer specializing in divorce, in case you're just curious, who was there with me during the delivery. My husband knew the delivery date, but he didn't have the address of the hospital. I gave my babies the last name of my grandfather. I told the nurses that I am both the mom and dad. My husband showed up the next day after I gave birth and still demanded the DNA test and complained about the type of wife I am. Again, I ignored him. I went home with my babies, but I was exhausted because he didn't help me with them at all, to the point that I moved to my best friend's house so she could help me with them. He called all his family members saying that I am cheating on him and that the twins aren't his. They are calling me every single day and calling me names. I am tired, depressed, and fed up. I contacted my husband and told him that I agree to do the DNA test, but expect a divorce soon and I am not going to change the name. We did the test, and he was the father. All his family were calling to apologize and wanted to meet the babies, including the dad. They begged me to come back. I said no, and that was my final decision. All his family are again texting me and threatening me for not letting them see the kids and divorcing their son. Am I the idiot? Edit. Sorry for the long text, typos, and any confusion. I haven't said anything about my family because I'm an orphan. My mom and dad died in a car accident when I was eight, and I was living with my grandparents until 2020 during Infection 19. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, Salam sister, did you contact your guardian? Now would be a time for whoever that person was for you. Given you being an orphan, they would step in and assure that your rights in the divorce are being honored and help counter his family. Your children have a right to stay with you. The abuse and accusing you of cheating without witnesses and proof is a violation of your marriage rights and reasonable grounds for divorce. 
He's behaving horribly towards you, sister, and I hope you find peace in your life, inshallah. Also, not the jerk. Comment two, not the jerk. But from a cheater, I'm certain as hell he cheated on you. And to rationalize it to himself, he came up with the excuse that you cheat on him, baby trapping him. I am certain of that. Be prepared for more to come. And congratulations on the babies. Don't forget child support plus alimony, because you will need it for the time coming. Make him pay his share. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the comments and support on my last post. It's been a tough few days since then, and I have some updates to share. After the DNA test confirmed that my husband was indeed the father of our twins, his family started bombarding me with calls and messages, apologizing for their behavior and begging me to come back home with the babies. They wanted to meet the twins and make amends, but I stood my ground and refused. I was still too hurt and exhausted from everything that had happened. My husband, on the other hand, seemed to have a change of heart. He showed up at my best friend's house, pleading with me to give him another chance. He promised to be a better husband and father and to support me in my career. I was hesitant, but a part of me still loved him and wanted to believe that he could change. Against my better judgment, I agreed to move back home with the twins. At first, things seemed to be improving. My husband was more attentive and helpful with the babies, and he even apologized for his hurtful comments about my appearance. I thought maybe we could work through this rough patch and come out stronger on the other side. But then, a few days ago, I discovered something that shattered any hope of reconciliation. I was going through our shared computer, looking for some old photos, when I stumbled upon a folder filled with explicit messages and pictures between my husband and another woman. The timestamps on the files showed that this had been going on for months, even before I gave birth. I confronted my husband about it, and he didn't even try to deny it. He said he had been feeling neglected and unappreciated, and that this other woman made him feel desired and understood. He had the audacity to blame me for his infidelity, saying that if I had been a better wife and focused more on our family instead of my career, he wouldn't have strayed. I was devastated. All this time while I was carrying his children and trying to navigate the challenges of pregnancy and motherhood, he was betraying me in the worst possible way. I realized that his sudden change in behavior towards me wasn't just a phase or a result of stress. It was because he had already checked out of our marriage and found someone else. Looking back, I can see the signs that I missed. The late nights at work, the secretive phone calls, the sudden disinterest in spending time with me. I was so focused on my own struggles and the demands of my growing family that I didn't see what was happening right in front of me. Now, I'm left to pick up the pieces of my shattered life. I filed for divorce and moved out of our shared home with the twins. My best friend and her husband have been a godsend, helping me with the legal process and providing a safe place for us to stay. It's been a nightmare trying to co-parent with my soon-to-be ex-husband. He's fighting me for custody of the twins, claiming that I'm an unfit mother because of my demanding career. His family has taken his side, of course, and they're making my life hell with constant harassment and threats. I'm trying to stay strong for my babies, but it's hard. I feel like I've lost everything, my husband, my home, the life I thought we were building together. I keep replaying our relationship in my head, wondering if there were signs I missed or things I could have done differently, but I know deep down that this isn't my fault. I gave my all to this marriage, and he's the one who chose to throw it away. I deserve better than a man who would betray me and our family like this. So that's where things stand now. I'm facing an uncertain future as a single mother, but I'm determined to build a better life for myself and my children. It won't be easy, but I know I have the strength and resilience to get through this. Thank you all for listening and for your continued support. It means more than you know. Am I the idiot for asking my husband to cut ties with our neighbor who clearly has a thing for him? Part of me feels bad, but part of me doesn't. So I don't know if I'm here for validation or to be told that I'm back crazy. I gave birth eight months ago, and I definitely was slapped with postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety. I'm getting better now through medical intervention. I am not argumentative and accept all judgments, so please don't hold back. I just need some insight. Thank you in advance. My husband and I moved right beside his best friend Chris and Chris's girlfriend Claire back in October, and they also just had a baby four months ago. We share a yard. 
I'm getting incredibly touched out by my husband's relationship with Claire. He's only known her as long as I have, and in my opinion, they are both disrespectful of me and Chris. I understand and have zero issue with my husband having female friends. He has plenty and they are all lovely and respectful. However, there have been a lot of things I'm simply not okay with. Like the fact that Claire won't come outdoors if I'm outside, but if my husband is outside, she runs right over. She's constantly touching his arms and laughing while leaning in close, calling him names, telling him he's stupid while giggling. If I come out during those moments, she acts buddy-buddy with me, but it's all an act, in my opinion. We have also had barbecues, fires with Chris and Claire, and damn near always, Claire will ask my husband for favors, but never asks her boyfriend. Like clipping the straps of her baby carrier or grabbing things for her or asking him to hold her and Chris's baby so she can go inside to pee, even if her boyfriend is right there to a point where Chris is like, uh, I'm literally right here. And my husband will pass him the baby and be like, yeah, that was weird. It nearly always turns into her just hanging out with my husband all night. Even when my husband isn't engaging with her, she will still be standing right beside him. And last weekend, my husband and I were having a fire together and just reconnecting as a couple. I had walked inside briefly, and when I came out, Claire was sitting in my chair beside my husband and trying to joke around with him and trying to play with my baby, who my husband was holding. She didn't even get out of my chair when she saw me come out either. She just parked her butt there and basically ignored me and kept trying to talk to my husband. So my husband looks at me and says, "'Babe, here, take my seat.' and got up and moved and Claire goes, oh, sorry, and gets up and walks off. I asked my husband what that was about and he's like, I have no idea. I literally told her you and I were trying to get alone time and she just sat down anyways. So it's not my husband. It's her, not even 10 minutes later, her and Chris come out and Chris goes, Claire said you guys were partying without me and it ultimately soured the mood. Since we have been here, it's like we can't have alone time because Claire and Chris are always right here. I don't mind Chris. Anyways, after this night, I told my husband that I'm at a point of being completely uncomfortable with him interacting with Claire at all. I made sure to tell him that it is not him that concerns me, but it's her and her lack of respecting boundaries and obvious interest in him. He asked me what I expected him to do, and I told him I expected him to avoid interacting with her when he could, because dropping hints like he has been doesn't work. And I don't want to cause a massive scene by straight up telling her to back off, only because of Chris, because I respect Chris, and he's a good friend to my husband. So for Chris's sake, I wanna keep it civil. My husband has since avoided Claire at all costs, but Chris mentioned my husband acting weird, and my husband straight up told him that it's because Claire is making me uncomfortable, and that he agrees with me because Claire makes him uncomfortable as well. Now Chris and Claire both have been avoiding us and giving me death glares. Am I the idiot? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, girl, you clearly do have a husband problem because the first chance he got, he threw you under the bus. He should have addressed it with Chris as his discomfort, not saying, oh, wifey's uncomfortable and I agree, because that makes it seem like it's all you and he's just trying to please you. He could have also spoken up and said, no, Chris, we told her we were trying to reconnect as a couple and she can't take a freaking hint. Please leave us alone. Not the idiot, though. She's way out of line. Comment 2 start calling out those behaviors. Gee, Claire, can't keep your hands off my husband? How weird. Claire, it's really gross how you keep touching my husband. Why do you keep acting so gross? Claire, I know you wanna be me, but you're acting a bit extra right now. That's weird. Just keep on telling her she's weird and gross because she is, not the idiot now, for the update. Hey there, thanks for reading my update. It's been a week since I shared my story, and a lot has happened since then. After my husband told Chris about how uncomfortable Claire's behavior was making both of us feel, things took a turn for the worse. The next day, Chris came over to our house, visibly upset. He demanded to know why we were spreading lies about Claire and accused us of trying to sabotage their relationship. My husband tried to calmly explain the situation, but Chris wasn't having it. He started yelling, saying that Claire had always been there for him and that we were just jealous of their friendship. As the argument escalated, I couldn't help but think back to when we first met Claire. She had seemed so friendly and eager to get to know us, but now I realized that her behavior towards my husband had been inappropriate from the start. 
I remembered how she would always find excuses to touch him and how she would ignore me whenever I was around. The fight between Chris and my husband ended with Chris storming off, declaring that our friendship was over. In the days that followed, the tension between our households was obvious. Claire would glare at me whenever we crossed paths, and Chris would pointedly ignore us. I tried to focus on taking care of my baby and managing my postpartum depression, but the stress of the situation was taking its toll. I couldn't help but feel guilty for causing this rift between my husband and his best friend. Even though I knew I had every right to be uncomfortable with Claire's behavior, as the week went on, I started to notice that Claire was spending more and more time outside with her baby, always seeming to be there when my husband was around. She would make snide comments about how I was keeping him from his friends and how I was just being paranoid. One evening, I overheard a conversation between Claire and Chris through our shared wall. Claire was crying, saying that she couldn't believe my husband would choose me over their friendship. Chris was trying to comfort her, telling her that he would always be there for her no matter what. Hearing those words, I felt a sinking feeling in my stomach. I realized that Claire's feelings for my husband ran deeper than I had initially thought. She wasn't just being inappropriately friendly. She was actively trying to come between us. The week ended with a sense of unease and tension that seemed to permeate every interaction we had with our neighbors. I couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning of a long and difficult road ahead. Looking back, I wish I had addressed the issue with Claire directly from the start, rather than letting it fester and escalate. I know that my husband and I will need to have some difficult conversations in the coming weeks to navigate this new reality. Thank you for listening and for your support. It means a lot to have a place to share my thoughts and feelings during this challenging time. Am I the idiot for calling out a new colleague as a diversity hire after she accused me of nepotism? I've been working at a mid-sized software company for the last six years. It was my first job out of university, and I've enjoyed my time here immensely. I was also fortunate enough to be in line for a promotion when my former department head was about to retire, and the bosses upstairs decided that I would be a fine choice for his old position. About eight months ago, the company hired a young woman, Shauna. Shauna was hired fresh out of university, just like me. I didn't know what it was, but from her very first day at the company, Shauna seemed to truly dislike me. Despite the fact that I outranked her, she never treated me with an ounce of respect, would flat out ignore me when I talked to her, and would interrupt me when I was talking to someone else. Well, last Friday, my workplace was having a little after-work gathering. Both Shauna and I tagged along, although I did notice her intentionally sit at the opposite end of the table from me. Well, the conversation turned to how we got hired, and everyone told their story. When it was my turn, I started explaining my process, and Shauna interrupted me, sarcastically saying, step one, be the company owner's relative. Everyone was incredibly confused, including me. I asked Shauna what she meant, and she snappily responded, yeah, enough from the Nepo baby. I finally figured it out at that point. The company owner and I share the same last name. It's in the top 20 last names in the USA, so it's not exactly a huge coincidence. But Shauna assumed that I was hired slash promoted because I was his son, nephew, or something. I loudly out, dude, you think I'm related to the owner? Is this why you've hated me all this time? The woman next to her explained that the owner and I aren't related in any way, shape, or form, and Shauna kind of laughed about it. Then I said, yeah, that's also rich coming from a diversity hire. Shauna got really upset about this and 10 minutes later excused herself. The other women at the table said that I went too far, to which I answered that I was treated like dirt for eight months because she was too stupid to consider the possibility of our identical last names being a coincidence. Shauna called in sick today. Was I the jerk here? Edit. One. First. Shauna is not a POC. She's white. I am not white. It's incredibly ironic that you're all accusing me of racism when your own discriminatory assumptions, my being mistaken for a relative of the company owner, whom you assumed must be white as he owns the company, expose you much worse. Two, thanks for participating, everyone. I discussed this with the company owner today, and he opened up about how Shauna has been a thorn in the company's side since she was hired. It's no surprise that she has been equally toxic with multiple other people at the company. 
To all the people jumping for joy over the prospect of me getting fired, sued, and living in a cardboard box for the rest of my days, while Shauna Girl bosses her way to owning the company, it's not gonna happen. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, everyone sucks here. Are you in the US? Why would you put yourself in jeopardy? Race and gender are protected classes. Being criticized for nepotism, even if it's not true, is not. In other words, you could get fired or subject your company to an equal employment opportunity investigation for your comment. Comment two, AH? Not really. Fool with no self-preservation instinct. Oh yeah, dude, you are a supervisor and you personally attacked a subordinate worker with a protected characteristic. Are you out of your mind? Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for reading my last post and for all the feedback. It's been an eventful couple of weeks since then, so I wanted to give you all an update on what's been going on. After that tense exchange with Shauna at the work gathering, things were pretty awkward at the office the following Monday. Shauna ended up being out sick for a few days, which I think we were both kind of relieved about. It gave us some space to cool off. When she did come back, we mostly avoided each other. But it was clear the dynamic had shifted. The open hostility from before was gone, replaced by this weird, uncomfortable tension. We'd pass each other in the halls and there'd be this loaded silence, both of us unsure what to say. I knew we needed to clear the air at some point. So about a week after the incident, I asked Shauna if we could chat privately. She seemed hesitant, but agreed. We found an empty conference room and sat down. I started by apologizing for my diversity hire comment. I acknowledged it was out of line and that I let my frustration get the best of me. Shauna was quiet for a moment, then surprised me by also apologizing. She admitted she'd unfairly judged and mistreated me based on her incorrect assumptions. We had a frank discussion about the misunderstandings and resentments that had built up over the past eight months. Shauna opened up about how she'd felt overlooked and undervalued and had projected those insecurities onto me. I listened and tried to see things from her perspective. In the end, we both owned up to our mistakes and agreed to start fresh. It was a difficult conversation, but a necessary one. I left feeling hopeful that we could move forward on better terms and for the most part, we have. The last couple weeks at work have been noticeably less tense. Shauna and I are by no means close now, but we're able to interact professionally and even exchange the occasional friendly small talk. I did end up discussing the whole situation with the company owner as well. He appreciated me handling it directly with Shauna and said he'd keep an eye on things to make sure there were no further issues. He also hinted that Shauna has had some conflicts with others, so it seems this may be a pattern for her. I'm realizing now that I could have handled things better from the start too. I let Shauna's attitude toward me fester for too long without addressing it. I should have pulled her aside to talk much earlier before it blew up the way it did. There's definitely still some lingering awkwardness and rebuilding of trust that needs to happen with Shauna. But I'm cautiously optimistic we've turned a corner at the very least, I think we've both learned some valuable lessons about communication, jumping to conclusions, and dealing with conflict at work. Anyway, that's where things are at now. It's been a bit of pretty hard on us, but I feel good about the steps we've taken to make the work environment feel less hostile. Fingers crossed it sticks. As always, thanks for letting me vent and for all the support. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.